video, we will navigate the Grasshopper script to create Daxion terminal roof form. It is important to note here that this is not the exact roof form that is there for the terminal, but the essence of the draping form is being replicated in this Grasshopper script. The notes at the starting of the script mentions the plugins that are used in the definition. So before starting this, it is essential that you install Feverbird, Bifocals, Kangaroo and Pufferfish. If you're using Rhino 7 or above, Kangaroo 2 is part of Grasshopper as a native plugin. Bifocals is a plugin that will help you read the names of all the components. And Weaverboard and Pufferfish are available along with the script for the definition in the Patreon page. Some other things to note is that these colors and they help you navigate the script. Geometry input for each step is highlighted in pink. If there are certain data dams in the script, they are colored in yellow. Numeric sliders are in dark blue. Geometry output from each step are in blue. Solvers like kangaroo solvers are in red. Now we start off and let me just hide the existing geometry over here. I turn on the only drop review mode. So we start off with this form. Now this form has been generated in Rhino and referenced as a geometry. You can create this on your own, but uh, we have given the starting geometry along with the script. The first step involves converting this into a mesh and then applying certain forces as you see over here. The forces that we apply are edge length where we are trying to create a spring force using all the individual edges. Then an upward point load, which is going to apply an upward point load on all the vertices of this mesh. You have a base anchor. The base anchor is trying to anchor the bottom points, which are these to a circular uh, arc. So you find we find a we find a relevant points on these arc and anchor uh, them. The next is deciding top anchors. So right at the top, we have. The points which if we refer to the mesh would look something like this so we have these points and we anchor them to a curve that we input from rhino which is again referenced so we anchor it to this curve so that's the kind of anchoring that happens and similarly over here you have the remaining points they are being anchored to the next curve like this so in, such, in essence, all eight sides and the relevant vertices are being anchored to this kind of triangular shape. All these forces are clubbed together using merge and then we have the first solver over here. It is important to do or run these solvers in a sequential manner. So first we'll run this. We can select this to see the result. To run this, you need to set this to true and you have the output. Wait for the solver to converge, then set this to false, then move ahead. Here's the simulated mesh form. It's important to use the data dam to pass the data. Unless you press on this, the data is not passing through. And the next step won't be executed based on this mesh. So we press this and the data passes on to the next so here's the starting point for the next step. Now here we take the mesh and we do a couple of things. We want to create a skylight on top of this. So for the skylight, we again take a mesh, which is like this. This is again created in Rhino and uh, brought in or referenced to, Java, to Grasshopper. The way this is created is you can go to the top view and whatever was the center point of our base mesh, which was over here, we took the same center point and created an octagon with triangles. So here's the mesh, here's the skylight, 
uh, here's the starting point for the skylight. We identify one of the rings where the edges of this octagon would go and anchor. So we do that. We identify one of the rings. And once you identify that ring, we take this mesh, we break it down into smaller meshes using split triangle subdivision. You unify the mesh, take the naked vertices, which are over here, and we try to find the closest point to this curve where we want to anchor it. And that's the anchor goal. There is an edge length goal, which is trying to create spring force for this mesh. And we have a load goal, which is putting an upward load with a positive Z value onto this mesh. Again, the same thing we'll do over here. We'll set this to true. Select this. Let me go to the perspective view. And here we have the mesh anchored to the edge that was chosen. Once this solver converges, set this to false. Pass the data. It passes on. The next step is giving some geometry to this mesh, which means adding some frames to these lines. So we take a weaver word component called picture frame and we create this mesh with a punched hole for each face and use mesh thicken to give it a thickness. That forms a skylight frame and we use mesh color to color it black. And we use the mesh itself and use a light blue color to give it a glass shade. All of these goes and gets collected over here. Now for the remaining part from our initial mesh, we need to give it some sort of thickness and then extract stripes from this. To do that, we first ensure in this step that all of these are arranged in an order. Through this step and then we also create an offset using weaver offset using weaver bird's offset mesh so here's the initial mesh and the offset mesh so we have a thickness and we ensure that the stripes over here and the stripes on the upper mesh are aligned Through these operations, we also get the edges and we fill up these edges by using loft. So here we have the two curves, these two and these two. We do a loft, simplify the mesh and join them. So we have this mesh, this mesh and this mesh. All of them combined together are joined, welded into a single mesh. So this forms a structural core and on top of that, we perform a ribbed cladding. So we use the mesh direction to unify the direction. We use the stripper function to strip it into strips. And do a bunch of operations over here. We get the strips aligned in this manner with some gap in between. So here are all the strips with the gap and here's the main structure all of these together form the final output which if we disable the preview over here we'll see so you have the form you have the skylight you have the frame for that and you have the strips Feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific doubts regarding any of these steps. Thank you.